We're taking a look at Fujifilm Velvia 100 and how it compares to Kodak Ektachrome 100, both shot in a Pentax 645N. Let's check it out. Nice backdrop with some uh, bamboo and just the solid thing of green leaves and she's wearing a red dress. For reference, I have this showing 1 30th of a second at 100 ISO and I'm shooting 100 ISO film. This is quite a light. One of my biggest complaints about negative film, especially like the portrait type films, is that they tend to desaturate colors a lot, which is one of the things I like about slide films. They have very crisp, true, saturated colors, at least the slide films that are left around these days. And the Velvia line from Fujifilm has a reputation of pretty much being the most saturated film you can get. Having read that Velvia 100 is not actually that bad for portraits, unlike Velvia 50, which is hyper saturated and more geared toward landscape type photography, I decided to get a model and a strong color together. And this is where I have Holly in a red dress. The bonus was that she has a very lush backyard and it was very green and we moved to the other side of the yard so she would be more backlit as that's just my jam that looks great so i started in open shade which is just where there's not direct sunlight but there's sunlight obviously and uh, the easiest way to find that is to go on the opposite side of a building from the sun and that shadow area would be uh, open shade and it's got very soft light and i use the tripod because it tends to be pretty low light for 100 speed film. I wanted to shoot this at 100 because I was going to develop it in Cinestill's Dynamic Chrome developer, which uh, in addition to warming the tones a bit, also extends the highlight range. I didn't take a comparison roll that didn't develop in that, so take this with a grain of salt, I guess, but this is a first look, and it's just what Velvia 100 looks like with this developer, and I quite like it. It's a hint of warmth, which probably more came from the sunset, because Cinestill is actually not super clear about if you do the extended highlight range, if you still get the warmth, or if you do it for warm tone is the only time you get the warm tone. I guess experimentation will show that, or maybe they could help clarify their instructions, which are a work in progress, to be fair. I always love this type of shot with the raking light across the corner and across the siding of the house. And I had the little bit of depth in there from the street in the background. It feels somewhat cinematic or artistic or so, I don't know. I just like it. So having shots with some red and seeing the results, I decided to go out and try some blue. So Maddie and I wanted to try a summery theme because it's hot and it was just easier to do that way because she could wear her swimsuit under that and we'd do another two part fashion thing and she wouldn't burn alive. Let's take a very brief moment to appreciate the glory that is Film Ferrania P30. I shot these between rolls of slide film on my Canon A2 with a 135mm soft focus. I just really love this film. When you hit the sweet spot on this film, it's just like no other film I've used. They announced that they're releasing the 120 format by the end of the year and I can't wait. If we were to trust the listing for the 120 format on Ultrafine's website, it looks like it'll cost uh, around $12 a roll, but honestly, for this film and a larger format, I, it's totally worth it. I'll be buying as much as I can afford. So as I was driving to Maddie's for these photos, I listened to the Analog Talk podcast, which uh, if you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend it. But they had a guest on who was discussing how uh, people have this idea of what Kodachrome looked like. But uh, what they don't think about is that what they saw of Kodachrome was actually converted to CMYK and printed in magazines. So what you're seeing as Kodachrome is not exactly what Kodachrome was. And there was also, he pointed out, a, a much lower amount these days of chemical experimentation with film, with slide film specifically. So I went with the intent of pushing these shots to 200 ISO, which I did. 
and I decided to also bring along some ectochrome with me this time and I wanted to develop it in standard E6 chemistry and for these I used a unicolor E6 kit I got from FPP film photography project. And then we finally arrived at the blue, which was her swimsuit, a 50s style swimsuit that was very, um, right. not necessarily pure blue. It was more of a cyanish um, light blue, but it worked well. And there was just enough blue in the sky, despite it about to rain. Actually, it rained like cats and dogs almost less than half an hour after we wrapped shooting. Anyway, um, we shot around and I used the the neutrality of the fence to our advantage i think and we also did some cool stuff with the heavy blues the, the way blues render on slide film with the reflection in her sunglasses which i didn't plan but caught pretty quickly and tried my best to capture even though i can't get in really close with this pentax 70 uh, millimeter i think it is i'll run a correction on the screen if i got that wrong So it was muggy and she had, and we also had this kind of um, 50s vibe going because she had just gotten this haircut and it came together as kind of a 50s, 60s vibe to me, even though I don't know if that was particularly fashionable then. I feel like it was, I don't know. Anyway, it just felt right. And we had, uh, didn't have necessarily a lot of props for that, but she had the sunglasses, which worked out really well. And I just used her neighborhood and surroundings as a context. I used the fence as a prop. We had that uh, wicker lounger, I guess you could call it, that we used some. And then I used the environment to control the narrative of the photograph which was kind of a suburban boredom ennui in the summer kind of thing summer is always kind of a down period for me kind of an emotional uh, i guess kind of depression period for me i don't know if it's the heat or if it's the change of schedule but it's a thing it's kind of like how some people have it for winter but i have that for summer i kind of dug the vibe of the growing suburbia and the glamour and also just the odd mixture of the sameness of suburbia, but also the brightness and vibrance of her swimwear. For posing, I tried hard to keep an eye on her and wait for her to fall into place. I find this method to work better than trying to build poses from nothing, just like telling people exactly how to pose, because uh, from, from just catching the moment that seems right, because usually people relax in a good pose, in my experience, you just uh, start collaborating from there. It's like, oh, dip the sunglasses or shift your weight onto the other leg. Okay. Turn that hand a little, things like that. Oh wait, no, actually that's good. Because the light's coming from behind you, so. so if you look It back. helps a lot for me. But yeah, I'm very pleased with how that turned out. And as far as the outcome of the film, I would say Velvia is definitely less amazing for Caucasian skin tones than Ectochrome. But overall, it's a it seems to be a tiny bit greener, but not like a bad green. Like I don't like the negative Fujifilm C200 green. This has just a hint of it, but it was also pretty easy to work with. And also I want to see how it behaves with the Sinistil chemicals. The Ectochrome was just nice, clean, very uh, almost middle of the road, but just so clean and punchy. It took me a little over a roll to really get in a groove and I started trying to press ahead for more dynamic compositions, which is where these leaning against the pillar shots, trying to find different angles to put in the photos while also still maintaining simple composition and the lighting that we needed. I'd like to thank my patrons. If you haven't joined my Patreon, check the link in my description. 
Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications. Like this video if you enjoy it. I'm about to hit 4,000 watch hours, so I'm super excited about what this means. I'd like for you to join me along the way. Check out these end cards for a film review, what YouTube thinks is the best video for you to watch of mine, and also every video I've ever made. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Fujifilm Velvia 100 shot in the Pentax 645N, and go ahead and click subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks, see you next week. Bye.